Live from ABC7, this is More in the Morning. What are infantile hemangiomas? We have Dr. Robin Garris with us this morning talking about these extra blood vessels that are seen in the skin. Not as rare it sounds like as you might think, right? Yeah, it's very interesting. About 4% of babies are born with hemangiomas. And hemangiomas basically represent um, sort of a collection of extra blood vessels in the skin. Mm -hmm. They're not always present at birth. So parents like to call them a birthmark, but they may not be present the day of birth. They may sort of look bruise-like or okay. invisible at birth and then appear in the next few weeks of life. But it's interesting because they can grow very rapidly in the first few months of life, especially say month one to two. And so it's important to be aware of because depending on the location, they can impinge on important structures, mm. they can be cosmetically important, and there's some new things that are out that we can do to halt that growth, um, to stop any impingement or any cosmetically deforming growth. Do we know exactly why they occur in some kids and, and not in others? We don't. So that's an area still of active study. They seem to be more common in baby girls. Okay. They seem to be more common in babies who are premature. Mm -hmm. And hemangiomas has expressed some of the same markers. I find this interesting. That placental tissue expresses. Really? It's a marker called glucose transporter 1. And just like placental tissue, they grow for about nine months. They stabilize and then they go away. So, you know, there are some theories out there. Could it be a rogue placental cell? Oh, wow. There have been a cell that kind of nicked off during um, development that set up shop in the skin. But again, not known, sort of an area of active research. Where are the areas um, most likely to be seen? Are, are they in the face? Or are they? Yeah, excellent question. So you can have an infantile hemangioma anywhere you have skin. Okay. Um, but the areas that concern us the most um, are certainly around the eyes, mm -hmm. around the mouth. Babies are obligate nose breathers, meaning they must breathe through their nose unless they're crying or gasping. Mm -hmm. So any hemangioma that's around the nose, um, we consider sort of high risk because if that grows, it could actually block the baby's ability to take air in and out. Wow. Um, so yeah, so they can occur anywhere, but the high risk areas that we like to see them in the office as soon as possible would be face and then other areas that could um, cause discomfort or ulcerate, which would be the diaper area. Mm -hmm. Rarely we can see hemangiomas internally. Oh, really? Yeah, which wow. is, you can't see with your naked eye, but mm -hmm. if a baby has five or more tiny hemangiomas that you see on the skin, they have a statistically increased risk of having them internally, specifically in the liver. Wow. So we would do an ultrasound to look for that. Mm -hmm. But once in a while, we see babies who have a beard-like hemangioma where it's in this distribution, and they are at increased risk for having airway hemangiomas. Wow. So you can imagine that's something Very that you're risky. not treating for cosmetic reasons, right. you're treating for safety reasons. What are some of the treatments for it? I mean, do you have to operate to remove them? Yeah, that's, I mean, it's an excellent question. So many years ago, when I first started practicing, maybe over 15 years ago, we really didn't have anything good. We only had oral steroids or injectable steroids. But in the last five to 10 years, some new FDA approved treatments have come out. There's an oral medicine that a lot of people may have heard of already called propranolol. Mm -hmm. It's an oral beta blocker. It's used in other scenarios for lowering blood pressure, but it's now FDA approved for treating rapidly growing hemangiomas oh, okay. or life-threatening hemangiomas. Um, it does have some pot potential side effects like lowering blood pressure, lowering blood sugar, which is obviously a problem in a baby. But what's interesting is you can get that medicine in a topical gel formulation. Oh, okay. And the gel really has a very low to no risk of those things happening. So um, I always like to get the word out that if your child has a hemangioma on the face, um, on an area that you find to be cosmetically deforming or unpleasing, don't wait until it's gotten so big that it's this thick and the gel may not penetrate anymore. We'd like to help you as soon as possible. The gel penetrates about a millimeter, so if you can get somebody mm. in and get them started on topical treatment, which again is extraordinarily low risk to no risk, right. then sometimes you can halt that rapid growth phase, which otherwise would happen in the first few four months or so of life, mm -hmm. um, and really create a huge cosmetically important difference wow. or, or functionally important difference. You know, we've have babies who have them on their eyelids oh goodness, and. Yeah. We get very worried about rapid growth there because if you occlude an eye from a rapidly growing hemangioma 
and that eye does not get visual stimulation mm -hmm. from the world, the neural axis is not able to develop wow. later on. So that's considered an emergency and we have some really fantastic results of the topical gel. It's actually an eye medicine. Interesting. Being yeah. used on the eyelid and halting growth and even fading the lesion to the point that you can't see it. Um, by six months, nine months. Wow, that's uh, it's quick, and it doesn't come back once it's gone. Not usually. So okay. you know, we usually try to continue treatment well beyond when the natural growth would occur. So, rapid growth period is usually up to four months, and then you can see some gradual, slower growth up to about a year. So I usually continue treatment until about nine to twelve months, when I'm pretty sure we're out of the woods. If for some reason we saw growth start again, we would just start the medicine. Jump back again. in again. Yep. All right. But it's it's really a life changer in terms of treatment options compared to what we used to have. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can really make a big difference in these babies. And this is something that you would seek out a dermatologist for or your pediatrician I first? Think so then... I mean it all depends on your the comfort level of your mm -hmm. pediatrician because both of these medicines are newer. Um, some pediatricians might be comfortable starting the gel, but again, um, it's always nice to kind of partner with your pediatric dermatologist, right. and we're here available for that if anybody needs our help. You're the only practice, I think, in Southwest Florida I think for so pediatric at the moment. dermatology. Yeah, okay. it's really exciting. But um, yeah, we're, we're here to help, and whether the pediatrician wants to do it together, whether we want to see the patient, and then when they're doing better, send them back. Mm. Um, but this is one of those things where, you know, waiting in line for four months for an appointment, right. probably not smart. It's probably good to get in as soon as possible. And so, um, you know, when I hear that somebody's waiting for an appointment and it's a newborn with a with a vascular mm. lesion, I like to see those kids within the week or yeah, right away. Two weeks. Yeah. Sure. All right. Thank exactly. you so much. I so yeah, appreciate this. Yeah. Thanks for helping and, uh, us get the word out. This is wonderful, and we'll obviously put information about how to get in touch with uh, the doctor's practice here, and 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 more information about uh, some of these skin issues as well. And you can also type in questions, and she'll be happy to answer them for you. Uh, ABC-7.com is our website, and then our Facebook as well.